My name is uh, Dr. Krishna. I've been a physician for more than 30 years now. And especially in the field of addiction medicine, I have devoted almost 20 years of my life. I started doing this when I started first working in emergency room where I saw a lot of overdose cases. And then I went on to go and get my board certification in addiction medicine and continue to help people, especially veterans as it's very close to my heart, as my father was also a veteran. Doctor, so when a client comes into your treatment center and they're concerned about tapering off uh, medications that you provide, what is the normal process and time frame to help somebody detox off of either alcohol or drugs? Yeah. Okay. So let's take an example. Each drug and alcohol works differently from a different perspective. So well, the, the, the primary goal for us is to prevent withdrawal symptoms from the get-go. So we have supportive medication. Somebody come in not, uh, intoxicated with alcohol does not need medication right away, but within three to six hours when the alcohol will start to go down, they need supportive medication. And that's when it's the early intervention prevents them from having a seizure or withdrawal problems. And that's what we do. So that's early intervention, supportive medication is the key part that we do over here. And it can be different for other substances such as coming off of opiates. Now, if you do an early intervention for somebody who is coming off of fentanyl, you can cause them precipitated withdrawal. That we prevent it. We do not want to start early medication, only supportive medication, not equivalent or MAT treatment immediately. So we wait till the early symptoms start, we start with the supporting medication and then gear them towards the MAT program. So that way we can prevent the relapse and that is an important factor. A lot of people don't realize when they come in, coming high on fentanyl and they cannot be started on buprenorphine immediately, but we use different methods that every treatment plan is individualized and that can help. This is the beauty of what we do over here. Dr. Krishna, what is MAT, Medically Assisted Treatment? I'm glad that you asked this question. A lot of people are not aware of that people who have struggled with addiction for a long period of time, we replace a medical devised drug, or we call it medicine in this case, and assist, replace their craving and their addiction with a similar type of feeling where they're taking in a controlled environment so they do not develop tolerance and do not overdose. So these medicines are designed in such a way that prevents them from overdosing. Doctor, one of your unique selling propositions that I found here is that you actually have the doctors monitoring the clients. Yes, so the good part is this, as soon as the patient walks into the facility, the prior to they come in, there is an intake process. So we want to know and learn about the patient. So we know we're prepared for to help them in the right order. As soon as they walk in, the admission process starts to take place. Doctors are contacted immediately upon intake is done. Some of the information is already relayed to the physician, so they're already aware of it when the admission is coming in and what medication are tentatively to be ordered. And we're prepared for that. And all throughout the detox process, throughout the night, throughout the day, doctors and nurses are available to gear the treatment and they are not left hay and dry that nobody is attending to them. So that's a very good part of it that is very closely monitored. What are the advantages of going through the medically supported detox program at Bella Nirvana Center? So I'm glad you asked this question. A lot of people feel like when they are coming off of alcohol or any drug in, in particularly, uh, they feel like they can do it safely at home. The, the, the biggest deterrent for them to get off of any drug or alcohol is the withdrawal symptoms. I found that a lot of veterans and first responders like the fact that they like to get away from their triggers uh, in the areas that they currently live. And what is the advantage of bringing them up to a beautiful place like Folsom, California? I'm glad that you asked. The, the Folsom in California is number one city in California for the record, I think 10 or 12 years in a row. So that itself speaks for itself as location. Why Folsom is so beautiful, why we are located in Folsom? Because we are in the foothills of Sierras. We are also where the valley starts and ends in a way. 
and then we serve a community which are very urban and rural both and we get away from all the hustle bustle of the big city and we are safe city we are we are surrounded by beautiful trail for walking and doing all the family activities that we can expect over here it's quiet all the important uh, uh, hospitals and uh, clinics are nearby and especially for bella we are affiliated with the clinic and any small or big event we can immediately attend to it on a daily basis even on the weekend on necessary basis that's why we are so unique and beautiful so another one of your unique selling propositions is that you offer a one-stop shop. Everything's here in your clinic and it makes it more convenient for the veteran or first responder instead of having to continue to go outside and travel to other facilities. Why we are different, and I'm glad that you asked that, nobody offers this in any place that I know of at least. The human body is just not about addiction. It is about the mental health, it's about addiction, and it's about their medical problem. For example, if somebody who has been struggling with alcohol for a long period of time, they not only have an addiction to alcohol, but their liver is shot because of the alcohol problem. Their mental health is not doing well because they're addicted and not able to pay attention to their underlying depression and anxiety. Now here in the clinic, if anybody uh, in any, uh, at Bella when they come in, they automatically have access to our clinic where they can their medical issues such as diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure, any of these things can be attended with on a very closely monitored. We do EKGs on a regular basis for all the patients who are on psychotropic medicine to make sure that they don't have any underlying cardiac issues and they are put on a psychotropic medicine, which are normally and commonly ignored all over the place. Patient goes and sees a psychiatrist, they put him on psychotropic medicine, but they have never attended to their underlying heart problem. But we take care of that. That is the beauty of that, that we are cautiously approaching any problem that we have on the patient. So doctor, once the patient is stabilized and gets through the uh, detox process and they start feeling a little better, then they transition into your residential program. Can you talk about that? Yes. So I, I, I want people to think from a different angle. If somebody has struggled through addiction, that let's say for alcohol in this example, they have not done it for one year, two years. They've been doing this for a few years now. Now, there is most of the time, there is an underlying mental health issue is a chicken and egg situation. You can say that addiction came first and so mental health came first or mental health issue was there and the addiction came in because they were unknowingly treating themselves with alcohol, not knowing that they have underlying depression, anxiety, PTSD. Now here what we do is so beautiful is as soon as they are done with the detox and they're coming back, so likely chances they have their depression and anxiety will start to slowly flare up and we know it, that's when our psychiatrist does the intervention to sit down and have a detailed intervention to look into their trauma, they look into their depression, anxiety, all that history, and we go over it again and, and that's when we optimize their medication. Now, I want you to think about it. If I could fix everybody's problem by a flip of switch, I would have already done it yesterday. But reality is this, we all have to do that little process. We must go through a little process in order to optimize their medication, which is often overlooked in many of the rehabilitation centers because they are just talking about only doing a detox and they leave because the problem has been there for many years. We need to go back to the root. We need to go back to the childhood trauma that most of the people don't even talk about it. We have a special class that is geared towards PTSD. We also do EMDR to help them with their PTSD, their, their treatment resistant depression. And these are a beautiful thing that are offered at Bella that is not offered at any other center. It's a very unique situation to help them in this regard. So doctor, how long um, is the, let's say from the detox process onto residential treatment, I understand you also offer PHP and IOP. Good. And I'm glad that you asked. I think it's very important. De 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 detox is just a step one process where you, you want to start feeling at least somewhat normal. 
and that's when you uh, after your detox is over which was typically depends on the substance it can take anywhere from seven to two weeks up to you know normally up to 10 days on average and then we start the residential process now we work very closely with the va hospital where we do a weekly review on each and every cases and see how their progress is made and they're continuing to stay is dependent on their how they're progressing in a program and as long as they're progressing they're taking participation in the program and doing the steps program that they've been designed for them then it helps them do better we encourage them to kind of, and we as we said as i said earlier that we talked to the va and they help we find a little collaborative work and we continue to renew the program it can last 30 days two two months three months or more and depending on how they're doing in their program doctor can you explain the transition from uh the initial residential treatment into your a PHP and intensive outpatient IOP program? So uh, the good way to look at it, initially I uh, had said that detox is step one, then you go through the process of doing a residential uh, treatment where you're getting around and helping your optimization of your mental health uh, issues and optimizing your medication, learning how to do treatment. Then you step down to partial hospitalization PHP program. Then outpatient uh, IOP program and then as 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 is like uh, doing a training every so often to refresh what you have learned during your residential training as you go back and every once a month every other month you do an outpatient treatment with your therapist so that way you renew you talk about issues and uh, and you have to remember uh, recovery is a lifelong process it is n does not have an end journey it just journey continues as long as we live and our journey becomes even better when we start helping other people. One of the things that I've learned about um, Bella Nirvana Center is that you offer a number of different treatment modalities that's customized and based on your assessment to give that client the best chance of success. Can you talk about your dialectical behavioral therapy or cognitive or the different types of treatment modalities that you offer for the veterans and first responders? Okay, so when when they enroll, when they tran transition from the detox into residential program, the CBT is one of the commonest method that we use to start with there. Now, uh, when when they're doing when they start the process of uh, and it's a step approach, you know, we have little modules that we use, and we give them some homework, and the, the therapist and counselor they go through each and every thing that they are doing and uh, discuss their their problem. And also we separate the group, such as uh, involving um, a PTSD group, only women's group, trauma group. So they get little division into different uh, corners. And also while they're here, they also attend A and NA meetings in the evening. So they are also, when they go out in society, they all have a sponsor and they have their local meetings that they can go and attend to and stay uh, sober and prevent their relapse. Doctor, most centers that I've encountered only do therapy once a week. How often do you do individualized therapy with your client? So I'm glad that you asked. So uh, it all depends on individual uh, uh, person, but usually it's about two to three times a week they have individual sessions with the therapist. And this is along with when they are doing their group treatments. And not only that, if let's say they have a special need, such as they, they are part of a PTSD groups, so they have a PTSD group. If they are a special woman need, then they have a women uh, group that they do. And if they are part, uh, they're doing a special PTSD group, they also selected candidates, they go for EMDR treatment. And, and, and not only that, many a times the therapist counselor and me as a physician and psychiatrist, Dr. Knowles, are also doing individual treatments. So they have a lot of uh, ways to get one-on-one -on -one attention when it comes to treatment. That's excellent uh, to get this type of um, individualized uh, and proven therapy uh, for long-term success of these uh, uh, clients. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Knowles is great in doing psychotherapy. It's one of his specialists. He's also one of my very, he he knows, he's been uh, in past affiliated with veteran and has worked uh, with the veteran population for a very long period of time. 